welcome back to another video so today i'm going to take you through a full day of eating straight away let's get the disclaimers out the way eating like me will not make you look like me just like eating like someone else will not make you look like them either i do these videos mainly for meal inspiration and also to pass on some little informational nuggets of information along the way so hopefully i can slot those in nicely to these videos um if you find discussion of nutrition in general triggering probably not the video for you yeah i don't you know revolve my entire channel around these videos because i like to make sure that i've got content for everyone um and that i'm not triggering people but also people do really love these videos and i've chosen to film it today because it's actually a busier day for me now i am still going to be cooking some of the stuff from scratch because even a busy day for me i'm an influencer i'm an online coach I've still got more time than 90% of the population, but I'm making a conscious choice for all my meals today for them to be meals that are easily meal preppable. They're not things that are going to taste like fucking ass if you reheat them the next day or you make them in bulk. Yeah, Wednesday today, you will have already seen I had my breakfast. It's now actually 1pm because I've had quite a lot of stuff to do and I've just pulled up to the gym. So for my breakfast this morning, um, I had it after I went for like my walk and stuff. So I had it at about 10am. I had some protein oats with a banana because one of my 75 slight struggle goals is to eat a wider range of like nutritional micronutrients um and I've, I've not had bananas in ages and if you're familiar with my videos from years ago i used to bloody love a banana so i've started having oats on some mornings because savory typically my like micronutrients will come from things like avocado um but when i'm wanting something that's a little sweet i'm really enjoying putting a banana in my chocolate protes with some chia seeds for some extra nutritional benefit and a little bit of honey as well um as if the ghost milk chocolate way isn't sweet enough it's quite a sweet way it's my second time having it it's definitely sweeter than most chocolate ways but i still really liked it so that was my breakfast i'm now at the gym so i'm about to make myself a good old pre-workout in stan when it comes to your pre-workout sort of nutrition some people like to have like a full like pre-workout snack I usually don't uh, and I don't notice a huge difference in my training if I don't eat at all and I train fasted even if I take a pre-workout I do notice a difference in like my strength and my energy levels but as long as I've eaten something in the day beforehand I don't find that I need like an imminent pre-workout snack but when it comes to that side of the nutrition around your training if you're having a full-blown meal like for example my oats it's complex carbs it's going to take a bit longer to digest um, longer lasting energy because it is complex carbs but it's going to take a bit longer to digest so for like full-blown meals and things with complex carbs um, and proteins and all that sort of stuff you would want to try and I say try because I don't want to be tone deaf with this I know that sometimes we all have busy lives most people have a much busier life than me and sometimes the way the cookie crumbles is you have to have a meal an hour maybe even 45 minutes before you train but if you were wondering or maybe you feel sick when you do that if it's a full-blown meal you want to be trying to have it two to three hours before you train if you are wanting like a quick something you want like fast releasing carbs or something that's really quick to digest so like fruit would be a really good pre-workout snack ice crispy squares bars they're really popular there's nothing magic in them it's just because they're fast relieving fast relieving fast releasing carbs they're a simple carb sauce uh they've also got sugar in there as well it's little things like that that can actually make a bit of a difference for some one. like a lot of my clients sometimes they'll feel really sick when they go to train after work and it's because they've had like a full-blown meal and then tried to train half an hour after so yeah monitor how you feel and how your training responds best some people respond best to fasted training they feel really energized because having anything in them makes them feel sluggish other people are different but there is no right or wrong way to do it there are guidelines you can follow yes but you know you might be a fasted girly you might be you know a quick snack right before girly you might be oh i need a full meal in me you might be i need a full day of eating in me everyone's different so let's make up some pre-workout the lighting is going a little bit strange my ghost um pineapple pump i i don't think my camera well it should pick that up because it's 4k um i've just got that everywhere so i'm going to do a full scoop of the pineapple pump i'm hitting like a quite intense quads day today i will put the workout on the screen but i'm not gonna film it because i want this video to be focused on food but i'll pop it on the screen and if that workout interests you and you want me to run you through it i'll bloody vlog it for you maybe next week um and then i also i don't know where the free oh 
it was in the inside of the door i was gonna say i don't know where i put the lid and then i do a tiny little bit of this yeah sprinkle i spoke about this in my leg day vlog anyone getting a big fat juicy scoop of this and being like yeah let's fucking go you've got something wrong with you okay like i have to do like a tiny little sprinkle otherwise i itch and i just feel horrific so you can't even see i i mean it when i say i've probably got like two grams of pre-workout there pop that one in the little stanley chamber and then i'm gonna try and mix it together with my straw pre-workout as well like liquid pre-work like pre pre-workouts most of them you want to try and consume 20 minutes before you train so i'm gonna sit in my car and yap on tiktok for a little bit whilst i wait for this to work its way into my system this full day of eating if anyone gives a shit it doesn't really matter because even though yes this is a full day of eating and for search engine optimization purposes seo purposes i will probably title this something like full day of eating for fat loss and muscle growth but just because if you ate this it wouldn't necessarily mean fat loss and muscle growth for you and i know that some people will find statements like that really patronizing but I still have quite a few young people that follow me that don't necessarily know this so i just want to explain i title it like that because it helps to push videos out more but i genuinely believe if you are titling your videos with things like that it's not the end of the world as long as the message within the video is right because nine times out of ten if you're doing that sort of titling and then you're delivering the right message you're probably actually reaching the people that need to hear that message which is if you eat what I am eating today, it will not necessarily result in fat loss and muscle growth or fat loss or muscle growth for you because we are all different and we all have different requirements. My goals at the moment, so what I am eating towards and based off my like body, my statistics, my energy, my energy levels, my activity levels, I am eating in a way that is going to elicit some fat loss and hopefully some muscle growth for me because I have been training for over six years now but i'm in a very unique position at the moment because last year took me the fuck out and i was honestly coming into january i was pretty detrayed i've lost quite a bit of strength it's still not come back yet i'm still working on it and i did lose a little bit of muscle mass just from months of time off inconsistency my diet wasn't good um and all that sort of stuff so i'm in a bit of a unique position this far into my training journey slash career in that i have the opportunity to lose some body fat right now and build muscle simultaneously which you can always do but it gets a lot harder the longer you've been training the exceptions are if you're a bit detrained you've had to take time off um or you've had like a significant change in body composition yeah basically at the moment my goals are to body recomp i've put on a little bit of body fat which i'm not super comfortable with so i want to lose that um i want to feel strong i want to feel fit so i'm eating in line with that i'm not doing stupid low calories because i want to see my strength come back up and from a muscle growth perspective i just want to build back anything that i've lost if i build anything extra in the process hey someone you know shoot me shoot me that would be brilliant but it might not happen like i said i have been training for a long time but i'm in a good position for regaining something that i've lost and anyone that's in the same boat as me let that be a little positive spin on it okay so yeah that is what i am eating for at the moment so i'm trying to get protein in with all my meals um and just focus on a good solid carb intake varying my micronutrient and just feeling good and picking good food sources by the way i'm not meaning like this food is bad this food is good i just mean wise food choices that are in line with the goals that i want to hit so yeah i'm gonna sip on my pre-workout now i'll go and train and then i will see you when i'm making my post-workout meal which will be my lunch we are now back from the gym so i'm gonna make my post-workout meal now i'm gonna make like a chili beef situation with something that i've actually already prepped which is some sweet potato mash like i said before i went to the gym one of my like main purposes that i'm trying to get across in this video is making quick easy meals that yeah i'm doing them from scratch but i'm trying to include ones that you can meal prep so like oats you can make overnight oats and then you can even reheat them if you want them warm um and i've already prepped my sweet potato mash because like i said today is one of my busier days and things like this just take a little bit longer and do you know what i love 
rice i do enjoy rice and i think i'm gonna make a pasta dish for tea but i just feel like it's good to switch it up sometimes and sometimes i just get really even lazy it's just easier to put a bag of rice in the microwave than it is to make some sweet potato chips or fries or even normal fries normal mash but i actually really like potato and i want to start eating it more so if prepping it is a way that i can get some more in then i will so i'm gonna make like a little beef chili bowl and this is going to be my post-workout meal so i'm going to get a good amount of protein in there muscle growth um and a good amount of carbs as well and uh yeah then i'll be cracking on with a little bit of a work block but yeah i'm going to make this now and show you how i do it it's very quick very easy and the beef is something that you can meal prep i do not like reheated chicken that's something i really not a big fan of uh some people are fine with it i really don't like reheated chicken so typically i will do beef if i'm having to um meal prep it just a little hack if you don't like meal prep chicken there are other options uh meatballs and beef tend to work a little better in my humble opinion but yeah let's make some lunch So it's now 20 past six. I've just finished my final check-in of the day. So I am done with check-in work for the day. So I wanna make a little snack. Um, I'm really trying to be good with my protein at the moment, just with my goals that I mentioned at the start, protein is a huge thing. And since I've gone back to tracking my food, which yes, I do track my food. I know it's a very unpopular um, sin to commit at the moment, but I like tracking. I don't have an issue with tracking. Obviously, if you've got an issue with tracking or a history of disordered eating and it just doesn't work for you, do not track. But I do like tracking and it works well for me. And since I went back to tracking, I've realised what i thought was like 130 grams of protein is actually closer to 90. i am gonna make a protein hot cocoa which if you've watched any of our recent vlogs what's bloody new i've been having these pretty much daily and i've not had one yet so it's gonna be a nice little treat and then i'm gonna take myself for a little walk to get some steps in it is fucking baltic outside and it's also pitch black so i'm gonna make sure i'm just walking in the city center um luckily i live in the city center and i feel maybe naively but really central so i feel quite safe walking around in the dark i can walk to the shop i'll just walk around the shops basically where it's like well populated and well lit absolutely starving so let's get i might have a bicky as well treat myself and a hot hot cocoa before i venture out into the baltic depths of winter i swear i always do this to myself i kid myself i think january's here the winter solstice is ending and honestly in the uk I feel like January to April are the worst months for the weather. It's so cold. If you are coming to England, it is cold right now. Minus three degrees Celsius. So I know that some people live in like Alaska. I don't know how you guys do it. That is like cold, cold. But this is cold for us. Um, so yeah, let's make, let's stop talking about the weather. This is not a weather channel. And let's make a protein hot cocoa. Okay, so I'm back from the shop and I'm gonna make dinner. When I say this is a quick, easy meal, I mean it. Like every single time I try and find like a quick pasta recipe on TikTok, they get the blender out and I'm like, hey, hold on, uh, New York minute. The blender, as soon as the blender is in the mix, I'm sorry, for me, for some people, you know, the levels will be different everywhere. For me, that is no longer a quick, easy meal. So how I'm making the sauce, sauce? for the pesto pasta that I'm gonna make with some chicken is literally these two things and maybe some seasoning as well. But I'm gonna do it super easy. I'm gonna pan fry the broccoli, 
Um, I'm gonna do the pesto pasta and I'm gonna do the chicken in an air fryer and then put it on top. Now, I have mentioned earlier in this video, I do not like chicken meal prepped and I am standing on that. I don't like it meal prepped. If I was to make this for meal prep, I would swap chicken breast out for chicken sausages because I find they reheat and don't taste or like the texture doesn't go weird when you reheat them. For, for me, like reheated chicken, I just struggle with it. I don't know why, does anyone else feel like that? But I would swap this for chicken sausages if I was meal prepping, but I'm not. So we're gonna go over chicken breast because also more protein as well. If you can hack meal prep chicken, you can meal prep this. Um, and yeah, couple of things to know is I'm gonna do the chicken actually on top. So I'm gonna cook it in the air fryer and then put it on top of the pasta um, so that I can track it a little bit better and be more accurate with my protein intake. Like I mentioned, my protein intake has actually been a lot lower um, than I thought it would be. So I want to make sure I'm getting like a solid amount of protein in today. Whereas when I'm chopping it up and mixing it in, you can guesstimate, but ultimately like you could end up with like a quarter of a chicken breast as opposed to like a full hull when you're doing it like that. Um, obviously, if you have to do that, you have to do that. Um, and if you're meal prepping and you're gonna be eating all the meals at some point anyway, it doesn't really matter. But obviously I'm cooking for two separate people, me and Dan, so that's how I'm doing it so that I can more accurately track because I want to be a bit more accurate this week. Um, and then next week when I'm more in the routine of things, I will take my foot off the gas a bit. Another thing to note with tracking is if you are doing pasta, please pay attention to dry weight versus cooked weight. The two are very different. About 75 grams of dry weight pasta should weigh, depending on how you cook it and how much water is in it, about 180 grams cooked. I solely weigh my pasta dry. I do not weigh it wet because I find there's too many different variables that can then get involved. So I personally would recommend weighing rice if you make it yourself, pasta, etc. dry weight. Personally, that's just personal preference, but this is gonna be super quick and easy. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna start by seasoning the chicken. This is what we're gonna have for tea. So quick and so easy, and you can definitely 100% meal prep it. Like I said, I would probably do chicken sausages instead of chicken if I was meal prepping, but it's just because I don't like reheated chicken. Um, but yeah, I've split it like evenly. We've got a chicken breast each, some pesto pasta, literally two ingredients and seasoning if you wanna add more, and then some pan fried broccoli with some salt and cracked black pepper on it. And I just put a little bit of parmesan on the top and i'm so excited to eat this i think dan is about to come through the door in three two one. Oh my god i was right he's come through the door say hello to the what i eat in a day guess what we're adding to that oh my god oh, perfect pass me that here give me that bloody good stuff it's chapping out there so now we've got a Coke Zero and this. How perfect. So 
yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this now. By the way, um, Coke Zero won't kill you, if anyone was curious. But I have cut down because I was, I had issues. I was having like a lot a day. Um, so now I will have one a day some days. I don't even have any at all. I don't even recognize myself anymore. But yeah, now Dan's home. We can eat our pesto pasta chicken. Seven clips for breakfast. Tell your niggas that you about to end up on that. So yeah guys, that is a full day of eating with me. I know you might be thinking, why is it light? You just had a sleepy girl mocktail. Um, I'm actually filming this a couple days later because I forgot to film the outro like sit down part so I wanted to speak a little bit about supplements and it's kind of fitting because I was making my sleepy girl mocktail at the end um just to explain about that I've re I've only started trying that this week um because I've been struggling with my sleep saw it trending on TikTok I'm a bandwagon babe and I thought let me see what this sleepy girl mocktail hype is about I will leave because I know that people in the UK tend to find the tart cherry juice a little less accessible to find so I will leave linked below Amazon link to where I got mine from it is six pounds for a bottle though so and you do need to use it like it doesn't stay fresh for long like you've got like a few days to use it so I would only recommend doing it if you're going to be making them for like more than one person otherwise it might go off before you get to finish it the tart cherry juice a zero calorie zero sugar pop so like a sparkling flavored water or like i did lemon and lime and then magnesium so one of my supplements that i am taking at the moment is magnesium and that's to help me sleep um even if i'm not doing my sleepy girl mocktail i am actually taking magnesium at the moment um to supplement with it to try and help with my sleep i've not noticed a huge change yeah a little bit of a change i feel like i'm getting sleepier quicker on an evening but i think i've also been getting up earlier so i'm like it could be that um because i was struggling with not getting tired until like 2 a.m i basically wanted to round out this video by talking about what supplements i am taking at the moment now i want to make like it really 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 clear i see supplements as like the top of the pyramid you've got like your nutrition your sleep your training your training intensity um, recovery all that sort of stuff is like the bottom level stuff that you need to be covering before you even think about supplements supplements are the tiny little cherry on top the little point on top they are not going to contribute a huge amount to your results in the gym they're not going to contribute as much as the low hanging fruits the nutrition being on point making sure you're eating in line with your goals um getting enough protein in eating enough yes even if you're losing fat you still need to make sure that you are still eating enough so that you don't feel like absolute shit so that you can train with good intensity so that you can train well once that's covered then you can start thinking about supplements but if you are new to the gym do not listen to your favorite fitness influencer that's telling you that you know for example creatine grew her glutes 20 inches in the space of six weeks because it it didn't so the supplements you will have seen me take in this video like i've already mentioned is magnesium which i'm taking at the moment just trialing it out to see if it does help me with my sleep you will have seen that i took some greens this morning I do not take greens every single day. I've made not a whole video about greens, but I've spoken about my feelings about greens. Greens, I do not like the way that they are marketed. They are not a bad supplement. I just don't like the way that they're marketed. Um, I use greens on occasion when I feel like I maybe I'm not going to get enough micronutrient variants in my diet in that day. Now, I actually did pretty well because I had peppers, onion, sweet potato, broccoli i actually did pretty well i probably didn't need the greens but i didn't know how banana i didn't know how my day of eating was going to go which is why i did the greens people will claim that you know greens make you like have a completely flat stomach de bloat you if your bloating issues are coming from not having enough fiber in your diet then greens can help a lot of people's bloating issues come from completely separate issues which a greens powder is not going to fix you could have, some, have something underlying going on if it's nothing to do with like your fiber intake it's not going to help it is not a one-stop shop for you to fix all your gut and microbiome and health issues if you have any um and if you are suffering with like persistent bloating seek like medical advice because 
that's the road that you want to be going down not the greens road because i know i've had like multiple clients where i've not recommended the greens they've started taking them because their favorite influencer was taking them and they thought it would help with their bloating and it's actually made things 10 times worse for them so it is not like a one-stop shop this is going to fix all your issues the only it's not a bad supplement i just don't like the way it's marketed it's decent for trying to get in a maybe wider variety of micronutrients and getting in a bit more fiber in your diet if you need to but if you don't need to do that these are not a need basically this is like a very much cherry on top like you really don't need this and for some people i would actively not recommend greens because it might make things worse for you so yeah that's the greens the marketing is a lot of bullshit a lot of the time so ignore that i don't take them every day i just happen to take them in this full day of eating and i thought i would explain a little creatine monohydrate favorite supplement the only one i will actively recommend to pretty much everyone if you've got under uh, pre-existing not underlying if you've got a pre-existing kidney condition you would want to seek medical advice before taking this um but for anyone else 90 percent of people are going to be completely fine with this with any supplement you will always have non-responders or people who just don't get on well with it something to note with this drawing more muscle into your more muscle more water into your muscles you want to make sure you are staying extra on top of your hydration about 300 to 500 ml extra of water a day when you're taking creatine to make sure you're staying hydrated enough because a lot of the water that you are drinking will be being pulled into your muscles instead um but this is a fantastic supplement really good for your performance in the gym it's not going to turn you into hulk hogan it's not going to have you you know adding 50 kilos to your squat every single week but it's a nice little help it's very well researched they've researched it on women as well i will pop the study in here so we know that this does work for women both pre-menopausal and post-menopausal as well really fantastic supplement three to five grams a day every single day um, and it can help with your muscles looking fuller and because it helps with your performance in the gym and your strength therefore it helps with your progressive overload which therefore can contribute towards muscle growth but just taking this will not like make you absolutely wham you need to be doing the work in the gym as well and again please take the transformations that you see on tiktok about this with a pinch of salt a lot of people cut this out because this does make you hold on to a bit more water weight a lot of people i see cutting this out when they're trying to lose fat no like if you're trying to lose scale weight yeah it will help you drop some pounds of water weight but do not stop taking creatine when you start a diet i would actually argue that's a more important time to be taking it because your strength and stuff in the gym might be taking a little bit of a hit from eating in a deficit this will help you sort of maintain a bit more strength in the gym and also with it drawing that water into your muscles it will help keep your muscles looking fuller for longer and they can tend to look quite depleted when you're starting to lose body fat so do not like sleep on this when you're going into a fat loss phase it's not a bulking supplement it is a year round supplement depending on depending independent of what phase you are in pre-workout is another one of my favorite supplements which you'll have already seen in this video um i tend to like a pump pre-workout again one inherently help you lose fat will just help you push a little bit harder in the gym and to be fair you could argue if you are able to push a little bit harder in the gym um, especially if you're taking like energy ones and getting an energy boost and you're able to train a little bit harder um, you might end up expending a bit more energy which could help you with fat loss but it is not inherently going to cause fat loss pre-workouts like oxy shred like the thermogenic fat burners the results from that are so negligible in the grand scheme of things it's going to make you sweat a lot it might make you lose some water weight it's not necessarily directly going to contribute towards you losing body fat and please take like the studies that they've done on oxy shred with a massive pinch of salt because ehp i'm pretty sure paid for those studies which i always would treat with some level of skepticism that's all i'm going to say there um so pre-workouts you don't need to get like a fat burning one because i'm telling you guys it's not going to do much these fat burning supplements they're really 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 not going to do much um and you know if you're i yeah again they have a excellent excellent marketing around them with all these before and afters but there's so much context missing to those we've got no idea um what they've actually done to get there and it's definitely not you know even 
5% caused by the Oxytrack fat burning. You need a fat burning pre-workout when you're trying to lose fat. I just wanted to speak about that. Final supplement that I don't take, actually to be fair, I do take this one every single day. When my protein is a little bit lower, protein powder. This one is just the Ghost Hot Cocoa in Chocolate Peppermint because it's my favourite one at the moment. You can get a vegan one. If you're getting a vegan one, make sure it's like a multiple blend of plant proteins just to make sure you're getting a more complete protein profile from the protein powder, especially if you are a vegan or a veggie that doesn't get a ton of variety in your diet anyway. That will help with that because it will also help with the muscle building process, having more complete protein. But yeah, I do actually take this one every single day because my protein is a little bit lower at the moment, so I need it to bulk me up. Not bulk me up, but bulk up my protein intake for the day. And secondly, I really, really love this. Um, but you do not need a protein powder. If you get enough protein in your diet, you do not need to supplement with a protein powder. It won't kill you, but you don't need to supplement with it. Um, a lot of people find as well, if they eat too much protein, they get stomachache and they feel really uncomfortable and quite bloated. So if you're hitting your protein intake, and you feel fine and then you're going over it with a protein shake and feeling really uncomfortable it's it's just not worth it um but not everyone does experience that but it's just something to note you don't need a protein powder it is something i do recommend having one tub of one bag of on hand for any days where your protein intake is a little bit lower and you need to boost it up a bit but you don't need a protein powder okay you don't need a protein powder. And it's not magic. It's not magically going to cause insane growth for you. It's not magically going to cause fat loss for you either. It's just a supplement. It's just remember the cherry on top. That is my what I eat in a day. Just an example of what I eat in a day. Obviously I eat different foods every single day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to and you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. If you've got any questions just leave them down below. I will be more than happy to help. But have an amazing Sunday evening. Because I think this is going to be a Sunday evening upload. And I will see you soon.